Ms. Thompson, do you have anything? Good? We're good. Okay. Now, Just make sure I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I would like to say good morning to Miss uh, Helena Thompson. Uh, this is the Lucy Craft Lane Museum of Black History uh, Community Voices Oral History Project. Uh, we will be documenting the history of prominent citizens from Augusta for the next two years. And I think the most appropriate way to start off this process is with one of my favorite people, one of the people that I look up to and that I always enjoy talking with, and that is Miss Helena Thompson. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, and thank you. Okay, Miss Thompson. Um, when and where were you born? And could you tell me a little bit about your family? Okay, I was born in Augusta, Georgia. And uh, my parents are Wilson Miller, Jr. and Rhoda Sanders Miller. Um, my dad's from Augusta and my mom was from South Carolina, and uh, I grew up with my mother, dad, and three brothers. I was born, you want to know the year? <laughs> <laughs> I was born October 10th, 1933. Mm -hmm. What was the uh, environment like that you grew up in? neighborhood? Could you describe the, sort of the specifics of the neighborhood? And I know here in Augusta, we have different names for our communities. So if you could right. tell me a little bit about that community. Well, it is now called um, the Betham Community Center area. I grew up on Mill Street. And of course, um, it was a very nice area. There was um, Walker, Charles T. Walker School nearby that I went to elementary school, Bethlehem Community Center that had a kindergarten. I attended the kindergarten there. And uh, there was also a school right down the street, uh, maybe three doors from me, Walker Baptist Institute. And um, let's see, the Bethlehem Community Center was a place of interest, and I'm still connected with it as an alumni and friend. And I also serve on the uh, board, and I'm president of the Alumni and Friends. So that was a place where everyone could go. The only place we had a gym for the schools to play basketball. Um, I don't remember a lot about Walker Baptist, but I do remember the school being there and that um, I was not permitted to go down the street to the school uh, to see the boys practice football but my brothers would always leave, and I would always leave behind them. And of course, my mother would come and spank us all the way home. So uh, I remember that about it. And then, of course, I remember one other incident. I, I don't know um, when the school was torn down, but um, the Hornsby's had something to do with it. And I remember one day seeing Mr. W.S. Hunter walk down the back steps of the brick building. And uh, I remember seeing some students going and coming, but uh, mainly I remember trying to see the boys practice football. How about that? Mm -hmm. okay. Ms. Thompson, you mentioned uh, as you were talking the uh, Bethlehem Community Center Right. Could you tell me a little bit more about Bethlehem? Uh, what did it mean to the community? What were some of the activities that went on at Bethlehem? Okay, they had um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Um, after I finished kindergarten, 
um, they had clubs for girls, younger girls, and uh, they also had, uh, I think they called it Tri High Y basketball for girls, and the, the basketball for boys was called the Bombers team. Um, so they provided an outlet for you to do something of interest. They even had the uh, seniors. And of course, my mother went there and uh, she did weaving, knitting. So it was just a community center where you could go and, and do lots of things that would uh, just make you feel good. <laughs> And um, it provided a place for the community to have programs, um, plays, because they, the gym had a very nice stage, and it was just the center of activities for Augusta. And whenever you were going to Bethlehem Center, well, I could always go there, because there were certain places that I wasn't allowed to go. But any time you're going to Bethlehem Center, you know you were in a safe place. That's really nice. Who are some of the people that worked at Bethlehem that you remember? Some of the teachers and um, you know, the, the scout masters and the young ladies who were the Girl Scouts. Who are some of the people you remember? Okay. Um, for the uh, Boy Scouts, I remember Mr. Blunt. Uh, Robert E. Blunt, and um, let's see, Miss Rosalind Smith, Miss Alla Willie Gardner, Miss Felicia Abney. I'm trying to think of some of the other men who, uh, of course, my mother was a den mother for Cub Scouts. And of course, they came to her home, and then they moved on to Boy Scouts over at Bethlehem Center. So those are some of the activities. And of course, um, each year, they would have what they call a Goodwill program on the first Sunday in December. And um, they would have different choirs, like the Payne College Choir, um, some of the other United Methodist churches would bring their choirs. And of course, all of the groups that attended the center would sing. And it was just a glorious Sunday leading into the Christmas season. And the, the gym and all of the space on the floor and all around in the gym was just filled with people coming out to that particular activity. And of course, you know, the center closed at one time and it reopened and now it's called the New Bethlehem Community Center. So the alumni and friends tried to reawake <laughs> the, uh, the, the uh, Christmas program there the Goodwill program at the center. What, do you recall when that program started at Bethlehem when they started doing the Goodwill? Um, no, I'm not sure when it started. But um, I'm sure it must have been started uh, like in 1930 nine or 40, and I'm judging that from my, my birthday oh. to when I started participating in it. So I'm sure that as a member of the hobby club, um, at least when I was about eight, the program was taking place, Christmas time. Mm -hmm. I've heard over the years I've been here, I've heard a lot about that Mm -hmm. about the spirit of the community, the people that live there. Mm -hmm. um, could you describe for me sort of a, what was a, sort of a typical day in the Bethlehem community, some of your neighbors, uh, some of the activities? 
sensitivities you did to sort of in the community, even outside of the Bethlehem Center per se, but just within the community, what were some things you would do? Well, in the community, I visited friends in the neighborhood. Um, we had people who uh, were in the school system, uh, Dr. I.E. Washington and his wife lived on the same street. And there were two teachers in the public school system uh, who lived on the street. Uh, Mrs. Uh, she was Wallace, but her maiden name was Stone. Yeah, I can't recall her first name at this time. And um, Miss uh, Janie Boxton Townsley. And um, I would imagine that um, most of us were connected with our churches. And there were meetings in the evening of the different missionaries, missionary groups. Um, and if you served on the usher board or if you were a teacher in the Sunday school, you'd do things like that. If there was some affair um, at one of the churches, we had many prominent people coming to Augusta to perform, and um, the neighbors or some of them, anyway. I know my parents would always try to get us to whatever. And I had the opportunity to hear many famous people sing. And of course, these might have taken place at Tabernacle and at Haynes. Um, so we did things like that. Um, you know, it's just a friendly neighborhood and the usual routine of the day things we did. And uh, we did a lot of things together. Uh, we visited other churches together. And of course, if there was something coming to town of interest to all of us, we would get together and go. And of course, we walked places that we went uh, we did have bus transportation, but uh, if it was in the walking distance, we'd walk. Otherwise, uh, you know, if it's a little farther, then we might catch the bus. But we did a lot of walking, and I guess that sort of helped us stay together, too. Do mm -hmm. you remember some of the groups that were? Um, I remember, uh, I'm trying to see if I can, I may be getting this uh, a little confused with uh, when I was in away in college. But anyway, uh, Roland Hayes, Arthur Lee Simpkins, Marion Anderson, um, those are a few. I'm sure there are others who did come to Augusta to perform. Then we heard many great speakers, but I can't recall those names. <laughs> but any anyone coming to the city like that, uh, our parents carried us to those affairs. Mm -hmm. churches would often get together and do things, or you all would visit other churches. And it's my understanding uh, from our previous conversation that you were members of Antioch Baptist Church. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about how your parents came to Antioch, and what was it like growing up in that particular church? Okay. Um, Antioch was the second church, I think, of my 
grandparents on my father's side. And because um, my grandmother, my father's mother, was a member of Tabernacle, and she played the organ for Tabernacle. Uh, and uh, of course, that was before they moved to Laney Walker. So um, my grandmother decided to change to uh, Antioch. And most of her children grew up in Antioch. I had one uncle who did not change from Tabernacle, but um, the others, including my father, did change to Antioch. My mother was a member of Thankful, but in the later years, she changed her membership to Antioch. So that's how the family got to Antioch. Mm -hmm. what, what was it like at, at Antioch, at the church? What, what was sort of the, uh, the atmosphere like? And, and who were some of the people that made the church what it was? Well, I would think that uh, the minister at the time, uh, at my time, Reverend I.G. Yancey was my pastor when I joined the church. And all of the people, the members of the church were so caring and nourishing. Um, some of them, let's see, just to name one or two maybe, I had mentioned Ms. Rosalind Smith before as person over at uh, Bethlehem Center. There was Mrs. Moore and um, who taught us at BTU, um, Ms. Searles, Oh, several others. It's made to call names because you don't remember all of them. Um, but anyway, um, you know, it was a place where you really wanted to go because you would learn more than just about the Bible. You would learn about life, you know, how to carry yourself. Of course, that would be related to the Bible also. So all of those good things, I think, had a very good impression on me and lasting impression, things that I learned from the people at my church. If I'm not mistaken, Ms. Thompson, uh, someone else who was, was uh, near and dear to me, uh, Rosa Beard, wasn't she a member? Yes. Of what, do you, what do you um, recall about uh, Mrs. Beard? Person, and and I'm pretty sure the two of you had many interactions. What was she like as a person? Oh, she was just a wonderful person, and uh, you know I admired um, her and her children, and just how she went about doing whatever she did. Uh, it was just so genuine. And I would think of those things as, okay, well, you know, that's what I should do, you know. So it was a lesson like that. So I, I would say she was a teacher wherever she went. And it was, a, you know, a lesson to be learned and to hold on to. That's, that's the kind of person I, I know she was, yeah. And I, and I fully agree with those mm -hmm. things. Since we've been talking, you've mentioned several schools. Mm -hmm. Started out by mentioning C.T. Walker, and then you mentioned two of the iconic schools, Walker and Haynes, mm -hmm. as we've been talking. Where did you go to school here in Augusta? And after you left high school, where did you go to college, and what was that experience like? Okay. In Augusta, of course, I mentioned kindergarten at Bethlehem Center, and um, then Charles T. Walker for elementary school. And um, 
of course, elementary school. Uh, I participated in many of the, um, let's see, at the end of the year, we would have little plays and um, I would participate in them. Uh, we had other activities after school, like tap dancing, which I participated in, <laughs> in uh, trying to learn how to tap dance. Um, and I think I mentioned the choir. And, and uh, I'm trying to think of what they called these plays, but every spring they would have them, and I participated in many of those. Um, after Walker, I went to Haynes, and um, that was, it was just wonderful. <laughs> and of course, um, well, my mother attended Haynes, and my two older brothers, and of course my senior year, well, I might mention also I was in the, in the uh, chorus at Haynes, and I played basketball. Oh, yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. You know, we played half court. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One bounce of the ball. <laughs> so um, anyway, I did play there. I also played uh, with the Girl Scouts at Bethlehem Center, uh -huh. basketball. And... Um, the senior year, A.R. Johnson, which was the public high school in Augusta, and Haynes Institute merged, and we became Lucy C. Laney. So I'm one of the first graduates of Lucy Laney High School. Mm -hmm. You bridged that gap between Haynes Mm -hmm. Bridge that um, that that transition phase. Oh yes. Now, you know, I'm not going to let you go further without asking you about some of those teachers at Haynes. Now, I've heard a lot about the the Haynes teachers, and I know you have some good stories to tell about Rosa Tut, John Tut, Margaret Louise Laney. And I can go on and on. Who are some of your teachers? And, and, and what are some of your fondest memories about being on that campus and interacting with those individuals? Well, <laughs> I remember all of those that you mentioned, um, except Margaret uh, Laney. I did not have any classes under her. Um, Mrs. Tut was just a beautiful lady. I took piano lessons from her also. And um, she would always welcome us in. She would always tell us to study our lesson while we waited on someone else to finish. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Marjorie Carter was one of my teachers also. And of course, as kind and soft spoken as she was, you know, she was very stern. She'd make you do what you're supposed to do. And as a matter of fact, all of them did. Um, Mrs. Evans, of course, if you remember how her demeanor. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, there was another one, Viola Singleton. Uh, Mrs. Mildred Hillary, um, Mr. Tut, of course. Um, there were three of us who walked to school together. Uh, Edith Calhoun, Dolly Williams, and myself. And uh, we would normally be a little tardy. So Mr. Tut would get a, us every morning. Hello, girls. 
What are you doing late this morning? <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, he, he cared. And, of course, you know, he would make you do your work, too. Um, Horatio Lamar, who was also the basketball coach. Um, who else do I remember? Well, maybe... Uh, maybe that's how Miss Ora Thompson taught French. Yeah. So they were all uh, caring and made uh, an impression and left something that helped me to become what I am. Mm -hmm. uh, was there a specific subject that you gravitated towards that you really enjoyed and, and, and what made that subject, that class, so special for you? Well, I don't know if I had anything in particular. Um, I liked all of the classes. I guess I liked English. Maybe best of all. And then after a while, I found out I really liked trigonometry. It was a struggle at first, <laughs> maybe when I found out, you know, how to do it. But uh, I like that because I was thinking at one time that uh, maybe I would major in English. I liked French also, though. But um, I had some other thoughts about what I really wanted to do, so I changed that after I got to college. Well, I, well, I really went in thinking, well, maybe I'll do English. But uh, then my other plans, what I thought I might do, were there in the back, so I changed that. Nice. I, I've heard, Ms. Thompson, I've heard some stories mm -hmm. uh, about uh, Coach Tut from some of his former athletes and mm -hmm. things like that. What kind of like persona did he have? You know, I've heard, you know, he was a small guy would walk with sort of a carrot, like with, with sort of a, a big persona, you know, very well respected. Oh, yes, he was. And um, some of the things that I saw him do, uh, say to the guys as they practiced and they didn't quite do what he wanted them to do. You know, he didn't change. He'd just say what he had to say and go on, and they would straighten up and go on and do what he had uh, asked them to do. So, yep, I, I don't think he changed that much, you know, not like maybe bullying or anything. I say, no, nah, you got it. And then he'd call them, you're lazy. <laughs> and they would uh, spruce it up from there. Uh huh. That's good. So you mentioned, uh, Ms. Thompson, uh, college. Mm -hmm. And so um, where did you go to college and, and what was that experience like for you? Okay, you I went. Away from home. Yeah, Clark College is my school. Okay. Yeah. And. Um, I went there after graduating. It was a nice experience for me um, living in the dormitory, sort of being maybe like on your own, but still uh, many restrictions. So at that time, you know, we didn't, uh, we could not leave the campus. Uh, I think after we had been there so many months, maybe we could go downtown riding the bus, but no cars, you know, we couldn't even go across the street for a while. The only thing that was over there was a drugstore. But it it was a nice experience there, um, getting to meet 
people from different places and, you know, and then, uh, like I say, living in the dormitory, I said, well, I had a lot of sisters around me then since I grew up with three brothers. So, um, you know, I developed friendships there, yeah. Um, I didn't participate in uh, the chorus or anything like that. I uh, did some, maybe like, um, wasn't in a play or anything, but posed as a mural or something depicting uh, Mona Lisa at one time. Uh huh. And uh, let's see. I did have a small part in one play. And um, other than uh, attending the um, church vesper services, as we called it, and um, the regular chapel that was mandatory that we attended, uh, going to the sports events, basketball, football. Um, that was it. I was chosen as um, the queen for the Pledge Club to Cap Alpha Psi at one time. And then um, I was chosen as Miss Alpha another time. And of course, I I joined Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. So um, I guess I kept busy doing those things in addition to my schoolwork. I would say so. Mm -hmm. What did you finally major in? I majored in Secretary of Science okay. and Mining and Business Administration. Um, and the reason I chose that. Um, when I was in high school, I took typing from a lady named Mrs. Uh, Millsap, Janie Horton Millsap. She had her little typing school. So um, there weren't too many places except for maybe the Pilgrim who had secretaries and so forth. But that was my interest at that time. Now, I wanted to start my school and do the same thing. And of course, um, there was some property that we had right across from C.T. Walker School, and I was going to put my school there. Of course, by the time I got out of college, they had moved that, you know, typing and business and so forth into the high schools. So that was a no-no. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, I changed. Yeah. So let's see. Did that answer everything? I believe it did. I believe it did. So after college, um, did you come back to Augusta? I came back to Augusta um, after college, but then that December, I was married. I left Augusta, uh, stayed in California a couple of years, and uh, came back, and then uh, went to Washington. I think in between then, I worked at Laney High School for a year or something. And um, when I came back, um, I worked at Payne. I might have done that shortly after we came back from California. And then, of course, uh, I worked for the government in California and Washington, D.C. And um, when I came back, I worked at Payne again. And I worked at Laney, and then I worked at Payne, and then I worked at Laney. So um, I retired from the public school system. Mm -hmm. 
how, how many years did you spend in Richmond County? Uh, 22. 22 years. Mm -hmm. In the school system. School system. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was it like uh, working at Payne College? What was that experience like? That experience was very good. I um, worked under um, President uh, E. Clayton Calhoun first and um, Lucius Pitts and um, was there someone else before Julius Scott? Well, I think he was the last one. I don't think I, I might have missed one. I'm not sure. <laughs> so you were at Payne for, I would say you were at least in Augusta during that big transition period at Payne between Calhoun and Pitts mm -hmm. and with the riot being right there in the middle of those two. Right. Um, do you recall uh, where you were, what you were doing, and your response to the Augusta riots, what was happening? Well, let me see. Um, I'm wondering, um, I don't recall right now whether the riot happened at the same time that um, Hagett Hall burned on Payne College's campus. I think that was a few years before. A few years Maybe before. 67, 68. Okay. Hagel, first Hagel caught fire. Okay. The riot was in May of 1970. Okay. All right. Um, during that time, then, um, during the time of the riots, I can remember being concerned about my children being in school. Um, they were at Episcopal Day School up on Walton Way. And then we heard of some burnings downtown because I lived um, in Eastview at that time. So I'm not sure whether I was at work when they first started or in between picking up and going home at that time. But certainly I was frightened, yeah. So uh, I was just concerned about, you know, the safety of my family. Mm -hmm. I, um, I kind of got ahead of things, Ms. Thompson. There was one question that kind of uh, reflects the last question about the riot. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, growing up in Augusta, and even after going off to Clark, um, what do you remember about living in the South during the era of segregation? But what, what do you recall about that? Um, even if it's specific instances, but what was the sort of the atmosphere like uh, in Augusta, in Atlanta during that time period? Well, I think the atmosphere might have been about the the same because, well, you know, I wasn't exposed to too much of Atlanta, you know. And, of course, um, those of us who had come from different places, you know, we would talk about different experiences that we had. But, you know, I don't recall many uh, negative experiences that I had with any of the other, you know, of the other race or races. Uh, I, um, you know, I know that they had to uh, stand behind this line and the other line and uh, on the buses and then they had black and white water. But I found myself going to a fountain. So uh, I guess I was rebelling against that, doing that. But I, I never had any big incident of anything like that, you know. 
more specifically, like in the 1960s, that's when things tended to sort of explode around the country. But here in Augusta, other than the riot, in Augusta, mm -hmm. you really didn't have a lot of the craziness that you saw in, let's say, Alabama or Mississippi. However, there were a couple of incidents, and you mentioned earlier, famous people coming to Augusta. Do you recall or do you remember when Dr. King came to Augusta? You know, I was thinking about that, and I don't really recall it. I don't know, you know, when he was here. Well, the first time he came to Tabernacle. Yeah. In 1962. Mm -hmm. And then the second time he came back to Beulah Road in 1968. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure whether I, I could see you being right there in the midst. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I don't recall either of those, um, you know, my being present. You know, I read about it and I knew, but uh, I, I don't, I didn't make either of those events, I don't think. Well, Ms. Thompson, uh, since leaving or retiring from the school system, um, what have you been doing in Augusta? What are some things that you've been doing in the community what are some organizations you've been working with? Mm -hmm. Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I've been working with the Bethlehem Community Center. Uh, I've been working with my sorority, which is Alpha Kappa Alpha, um, the Lynx Incorporated. I attend Bible study at my church. And... Um, Let's see. I play bridge. And um, let's see, what other organizations? Well, I can't think of many more. That's a lot already. Well, I've been, I've been busy. Uh, I had mentioned my children, keeping up with my children. I have three daughters. Yeah, tell me a little bit about, um, a little more about your family. I, I know many of them, but you have uh, three daughters and you also have several grandchildren as well. <laughs> so so tell, tell me a little bit about the, the family life. Okay, well, I have uh, three daughters and of course they are all grown. One has retired. She was a public school teacher. Um, my middle daughter is still working, sort of thinking of retiring. She works at uh, Wright State University in budget and planning and so forth. And um, my youngest daughter is a physician. And she's here in the city. And I have six grandchildren. Mm, they are all doing well, well on their way, hopefully, to do good in their chosen careers. And uh, the two youngest ones are in college at this time. And if I'm not mistaken, you all have developed somewhat of a legacy because uh, I know of at least one daughter and I think at least one granddaughter that has followed in your footsteps. Am I correct in terms of where they went to school? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, my youngest daughter is a graduate of Clark. And my next to the youngest granddaughter is attending Clark at this time. Clark Atlanta now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Ms. Thompson, uh, as we bring closure to this interview, um, I started off by mentioning in the conversation that I do these interviews so young folks can know the importance of what your generation has done. If you had to speak to the younger generation, what are some things that you would tell them in terms of how to be successful and maybe how to navigate some of the pitfalls in life? Well, I think I would um, say to them 
as I probably say, uh, you know, I always have a lecture from a grandson, my granddaughters, and my great grands too. I have two great grands. Yeah. Um, stay focused on what you would like to do. Give it your best effort. Stick with it. Be thankful for all of your blessings. And never forget God. I think that would be what I would say to them. I think that's good advice, not just for uh, young folks coming up, but even old cat like me. <laughs> Very good advice. Well, listen, Ms. Thompson, on behalf of the Lucy Craft Lane Museum and our Community Voices Oral History Project, uh, we thank you for being a part of this project, and uh, we look forward uh, to uh, using this information uh, for research and to show folks just how important this community is. So thank you once again. Thank you. Okay.